Afternoon. Um, the average solving time for a Rubik's Cube is infinite because most people can't, and so they have infinite time. This is a problem with averages. Um, fastest time is 10 seconds, so I'm not even close to that. Um, my name is Lucas, uh, and I think CRO is kind of silly. Um, but I read all of your uh, suggestions for the stuff we need to be talking about, and you wanted practical advice for CRO. So um, here are my top three tips for raising your conversion rate. Tip number one, uh, slash your prices by half. Uh, <laughs> Joshua already talked about this. This is the easiest way probably to uh, bankrupt your company and increase your conversion rate. Um, Number two, if you have multiple products on your site and one of them converts better than the others, get, risk, get rid of everything else. Um, way. Um, number three, um, get rid of your website, uh, call your mom, sell a product to your mom, one visitor, one customer, conversion rate of one. Can't do any better than that. So, um, on to the actual talk. So, I'm going to talk about uh, multi arm bandits, but I'm going to talk about multi arm bandits as a uh, mathematical concept uh, or a construct, and the way it relates to the testing that you guys uh, should be doing every day, um, and why it's important that you understand the different things that uh, are part of this, uh, this mathematical problem. And I don't have any slides because I've, if I made slides, they would have math on them and uh, you would all fall asleep, and that wouldn't help anyone. So I'm going to do without slides. Um, I work for Booking.com. I saw a lot of hands. Uh, that's cool. I know we're not as big in the US as we are in Europe. Uh, in Europe, we do about 50% of uh, all online bookings. Uh, in some cities, we do more than 50% of all actual bookings. Uh, that is pretty insane. Um, it's a huge business. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, basically, I sell holidays. Uh, you know, if, if Netflix makes a mistake and they recommend the wrong movie, then you're going to waste, you know, a couple of minutes of your life watching, I don't know, American Pie 4. Um, if I make a mistake in recommendations, I ruin honeymoons. Um, <laughs> not good, so try not to. Um, the thing about the multi arm bandit is um, you probably read some blog post about how, how you know, it's going to save the world and all that. Um, and how there's this complicated math behind it. But the reality of the multi arm bandit problem is that it's, an, it's a problem. It's not a solution. Um, so I'm going to talk about the problem, not the solution. Right? Uh, you can talk to Matt about solutions if you want. Uh, he, he knows more about them than I do. Um, and it's really about uh, science versus business. And so that's why the title of the talk, uh, Pete asked me, what's the title for your talk? I said, I don't know. Uh, you tell me. So the title is apparently Scientist versus Bandit. Um, okay, good, good title. Um, so as scientists, when we do testing, we use a lot of the tools and the terminology from science. So we, when we're, we're talking about a split test, we calculate a conversion rate, and then we calculate a, uh, we do a g-test, right? We calculate a significance level to figure out whether there was a statistically significant difference between A and B. Now, a scientist would actually care about that, I don't. I care about money. <laughs> I'm very disappointed that yesterday, when we had the, the, the family feud thing, um, money was only an answer to the question about your personal life. Seriously, guys? Like, I mean, why are you doing all this testing? Right? Why are you running all these tests? To make money. And so the, the object of your testing is not necessarily to reach statistical significance, and so the question shouldn't be, uh, how do I get a bigger sample size so I can uh, reach statistical significance faster? The question should be, how do I get more customers so I make more money, right? The, the, so, multi arm bandits um, is about business versus science. It's also about uh, decisions rather than uh, 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 statistics. So the multi random is what in math they call a decision problem, and I'll, I'll explain more about the, uh, about the actual problem later. So um, imagine you want to go to a casino, and so to go to the casino, uh, first you have to buy a tux. So you go to the tux store. Is there a, such a thing as a tux store? 
I don't know. A store where you buy tux. You get to the store, and there's a long line of people outside. You're like, fuck. Okay, well, queue up. Finally, you know, you get into the store, you buy a tux, you look real fancy, just like me. Then you go, you need to get a haircut. Well, I, I don't actually have any hair, but you know, other people do, so you have to get a haircut. So you go to a barber shop, and again, there's this line outside, all these people that apparently also want to go to the casino. And then, so you're standing outside, you're queuing up again, you know, in the line, finally inside, you get a haircut, or like Michael here, you, you don't have any hair. Um, and so you've got your tux, you've got your hair, you get your car, you're driving to the casino, and again, there's a line of cars, your traffic jam, so you're driving really slowly to the casino, park your car, and then you get to the front door, and again, there is a line of people who want to get into the casino. So, finally you're inside, and by this time you're really thirsty, just like me. And you, you really use a drink. And right by the entrance, there's this big table, and on the table there's a big punch bowl, a lot of punch. You're like, hey, I could, you know, that's good, I'm, I'm really thirsty. So you walk over to the punch bowl, and there is no punch line. So... <laughs> Now that you're all awake, <laughs> in a casino, there's such a thing as a slot machine. You might have seen them. The, there's, these, uh, there's these machines that have all the turning things in them and a the little arm. You call them a one-armed bandit. You pull the thing and it goes, and you either hit jackpot or you don't, or you win some amount of money. And the multi-armed arm, the multi -arm bandit problem is essentially you are walking into a casino, there are a bunch of slot machines, not just one. You have a limited amount of coins in your pocket, and you want to maximize your gains. That is it. That is the entire problem. All the other stuff about standing in line, that was just a fuck well. Um, the problem is, with these coins, what machine do I put my coins in to maximize my gains? Right? How do I decide which machine gets my money in order to make the most profit. That's it. So, given that that is a problem, I can give you a very simple, naive solution. And the reason I give this, and you're going to say, you're going to groan again, just like with a bad pun, um, but I think it's very important that we consider this solution as a real alternative, because it is the reality of most businesses at the moment. It's the hippo bandit is your boss tells you which of those slot machines is the one that's going to make you the most money. And you put all of your coins into that machine. Now, you all know that probably isn't the best solution, but it is the reality of what it, most businesses are doing. And granted, in some scenarios, that is actually the best thing you can do. Because imagine if you knew which of these machines had the highest turnout. Imagine you had what we call an oracle that could tell you up front which of these machines has the biggest gain. Then the best strategy would actually be to put all your coins in this machine, because that's how you make the most money. So the naive bandit, or, or the let's just put all the money in one machine bandit, uh, is a real solution to the multi-arm bandit problem. Now, in most cases that we're talking about here, it's not actually the thing we want to do because we don't know what the underlying distributions are. We have no idea which of these machines is best. Or, in case of a website, we have no idea which variation will win. So, there are some other solutions to, uh, to the multi-round band problem. Um, and one that's very well known is what we call the Epsilon First uh, Bandit. It's a bandit where you decide up front how many of my coins I'm going to use to figure out which bandit is best. And I will take these coins and split them into even samples, and I will, if I have two machines, put half of the coins in one machine, half of the coins in the other machine. And at the end of this test, I will decide which, or I'll look, which of these machines has given me the most money, and I will put the rest of my coins into this single machine. Sound familiar? This is A-B testing. This is what you guys are doing. It's a solution to a more general problem. 
And I would argue that in many cases, it's a better solution than the hippo bandit. Because, does, anyone know, does everyone know what hippo stands for, by the way? I'm using this as a highest paced person's opinion. Very good. So, um, the epsilon first, or the, the epsilon stands for uh, exploration, but uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, the epsilon first bandit is essentially the same thing as A-B testing, right? You have a, a fixed amount of time that you explore, and at some point you go, okay, now I make a decision, I decide which one is best, and I'll put the rest of my money into that machine. Now, there's two problems with this approach, and, and I would like to illustrate this um, by using PEEP. PEP? PEP? I, I, need, your, I, I need your voluntary uh, assistance here. So, come on, come on, get up, drop your phone, come on. PEP, ladies and gentlemen, you, you might know this man. Okay, so, so imagine I'm the bandit, and I've got two arms, and uh, I'll give you uh, 100 coins, so, we're going to run Epsilon first, right? Live, live demo. We're going to run Epsilon first, so we're going to run an A-B test first, and then at some point you're going to say, I make a decision, and I'll put the rest of my money into that one machine, right? Good. Like a, a good A-B tester, you will decide up front how much of your coins you're willing to waste trying to figure out which one is best. So, how many of your coins do you think? Uh, let's say 10%. 10%, that's a wise choice. So, there are two machines, so go, go for it. Uh, just. Okay, you pull the first one, you win nothing. <laughs> Try the other one. You, you, you're, you're sampling at random, right? That's right. Ah, oh, jackpot. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're always... <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> Pep, Pep's calling the text. And this is, this is the problem, right? So, so imagine that you, you have two arms and one never wins and the other always wins. If you decided up front that you were going to spend half of your coins or 10% of your coins on this first machine or you were going to run your test for a month because that's your business cycle, then you might potentially waste all this money even though you already have a pretty good, good idea of which one's going to win. So that's one problem. The other problem is that if there was a very small marginal difference between these two bandits, 10% might not be enough. And so, when you get to the end of the test, you might not actually be able to make a, a distinction between these two. You, you would pick one at random, and you might make the wrong choice. And now, you're stuck with that wrong choice forever, which is bad. And I'll tell you why it's bad. Another concept that, uh, that we talk about in, uh, in bandits, and that's uh, if you remember anything from this talk, please don't remember the, the lame joke. Remember this part. is the concept of regret. Regret is the amount of gain we missed because we put coins in the wrong machine. If we had an oracle and we could put all our coins in the best optimal machine, we would have a regret of zero, right? No money lost. But because we don't, we have to spend some of our hypothetically optimal money trying to figure out which one of these is best. Now, if you decide too late, you will have regrets because you already had an idea of what was going to happen, but you were still putting coins in that suboptimal machine because you decided you were going to run the test for two months. Right? If you decide too early, you run the risk of having infinite regret, and I do mean infinite, just like the Rubik's Cube, because when you make the wrong decision, every single pull will basically have regret with it, because you're pulling the wrong arm, you're using the wrong machine. So the concept of regret is the, uh, the cost of trying to figure out which machine is best. So, the other concept that's important for bandits is the distinction between exploration and ex exploitation. Now, when we, when we talked about Epsilon first, uh, why is this up already? Jeez, guys, this is for later. Um, talked about Epsilon first, I said Epsilon stands for exploration. Um, bandit problems, you have to make a trade-off between uh, exploration, so trying to figure out which machine is best, and exploitation, explo exploiting the, the knowledge which machine is best. And so, trying to balance these two is, is actually trying to minimize regret. So, you're trying to do uh, the amount of exploration that is required for you to then maximally exploit your knowledge. Um, in the case of Epsilon first, you might be exploring too long or you might not be exploring enough. Um, that said, still solves the problem. Just might not be optimal. 
So when you read about the multi-armed bandit, usually people are trying to sell you a solution, or they're trying to talk about uh, a solution that is uh, quote-unquote better than A-B testing. Um, one of those could be epsilon greedy, which is an approach where you say, I will always, until the end of time, spend part of my budget on trying to figure out which machine is best, and I will spend the rest of my coins on the, what is then considered to be the best machine. So with Epsilon first, time-wise, first, all I do is explore. So all my coins are being used to gain information about which machine is best. And at some point in time, I make a decision. And then all my coins are exploit. I'm putting all of them into the best machine, or what I think is the best machine. In Epsilon Greedy, I'm not splitting by time. I'm splitting by some segment of my traffic or coins or whatever we're talking about. So you say 10% of my coin, every 10th coin I will use to explore, I will put that in a random machine, and the other nine coins I will put into the best machine. Now the advantage of Epsilon Grady is you don't, you don't ever make a, a real decision, a def definitive decision about what is the best machine. So theoretically, if you run it long enough, you will find which is the best one and you will win. Um, the disadvantage of Epsilon Grady is that once you've pretty definitively figure out which one is the best one, you're still going to keep on exploring. Um, so there's still some regret tied to Epsilon, uh, Epsilon Grady. Now there's, there's other approaches that are uh, mathematically, more, mathematically more complicated. I won't even begin to talk about those. Talk to Matt if you want to know more. Um, I think when we talk about these things, and when you think about the notion of regret and A-B testing, when I talk to people here, I'm not sure bandits are for you. I'm going to be very honest. I think uh, many of you are struggling with A-B testing. Many of you are struggling with hippos. Um, and using the concepts from bandits is uh, an interesting way to think about these things. Uh, but that doesn't mean you necessarily go, should go to the next level and try to do uh, even more complicated things than A-B testing. Right? Try to get this down first. What I do think is interesting is for you to consider the notion of regret in the context of the A-B testing you are doing. For instance, if you have traffic to your website and you are not running a test, that is by definition regret. Because you are not using this visitor to learn anything. You are not using this visitor to figure out whether you could make your website better. You're just giving them the one machine that for now you figured out is the best thing. And I don't know about you guys, but our website isn't perfect. Um, could be better. Um, my conversion rate isn't one, um, even though my mom books with us. Um, so the, if you want to minimize your regret, which is what the bandit is about, run as many tests as you can all the time, right? And once you get that done, then we can talk about more complicated stuff. So I think I have one more talking point. Yeah, so there are, um, all that said, there are cases where bandits are actually very useful, and one of them is something like news headlines. So if you have a copy that is very perishable, uh, and you can have multiple variations of that copy, then there's a very short window of time when that copy is relevant, and you don't really have the time to run a nice, two-week A-B test on a headline for a news item. Right? Within two weeks, that item is going to be completely irrelevant. It's not going to be interesting. And so what you would like is some sort of system that shows the first 100 or 200 visitors a random headline, and then already starts to diverge more traffic to the variant that seems to be winning. Not because you will then draw a conclusion from that and go, oh, well, it looks like uh, those lists really work. Well, actually, they do. But, um, but because you want to exploit as much as possible before that headline becomes irrelevant because the news is over. So that's a, a typical case where bandits are actually very useful because you're not really wanting to learn as much as mostly exploit something that's very perishable. So with that in mind, uh, is that all clear? I hope you're all posting questions about bandits and regret and explore exploit. I also have a demo. I don't know. How much time do I have? You have enough. I have enough. Awesome. Hmm? 15 minutes. 
15. So I have a little demo, because um, I was talking to a lot of people, and I, I figured this would, might be interesting. So I work for Booking.com. Um, it's awesome. Also, we're hiring um, to talk to me. Uh, and every month, we have two days hackathon. Yes, every month, two days. That's 10% of your time, where you can do whatever you want, as long as you can somehow explain to anyone that it might be maybe relevant uh, for your business. Uh, a designer on my team spent two days painting rocks. Um, hackathon. Um, I built this thing because I, I was seeing a lot of people uh, looking at A-B tests and uh, continually refreshing our internal tools that we use to do A-B testing um, and drawing conclusions very early on, on based on things that to me seem to be random. Uh, and so I tried to warn them for this. Um, and then, at some point, I made a call too early. I called a test way before um, the, the time that I had set for this test. And, and I was called out in it, and someone said, well, why did you do that? And I said, well, look, um, we're running this test, and there's a, bunch, there's a couple of million visitors in both variants, and there are a couple of hundred thousand bookings in one variant, and there are almost none in the other. Uh, so, we're kind of bleeding money here. Uh, if I were a scientist, I would wait, right? But actually, I'm a bandit. I want to call the test. These things are so far apart that I don't want to wait to get more certainty. I'm certain enough to make my decision. Now, that's different from me then going, well, I ran this test and I learned something. No, I learned nothing. I called the test too early. I cannot tie any sort of conclusion to this test, but at least I'm not bleeding money anymore, right? This is the fundamental difference between scientists and bandits. So I built this thing, which um, is a game, and you can all load it up in your... See if I can get the URL to show. Uh, it's Lucas from here, that's my name, .github.io slash confidence, because it will destroy your confidence in A-B testing. You've been warned. Mm. You can load this up on your own machine. And you can, you can either play arcade mode or simulation mode. I'm still working on simulation mode. Patch is welcome. So we're going to play arcade mode. We're going to play this live, and you're all going to be playing. So. Arcade mode is the following. You will see 10 tests. They, these tests are simulated. It's not real. Don't worry. We're not really losing money. These 10 tests are being simulated in real time. So it's like you, you're running a test on your website, and you're hitting a 5 and refreshing the page every second. right? Nine of these tests are AA tests. There is absolutely no difference between base and variant. And so any fluctuation that you are seeing, any effect that you are seeing, is what we call an observed effect. It's just randomness. It's noise that's in the data. There's, there's for these nine experiments, absolutely no effect other than randomness. One of them is an experiment that has an effect. And it can either be positive or negative. And in the first round, that effect is 100%. So that means if it's negative 100%, there will be absolutely zero conversions in the variant. If it's plus 100, there will be twice as many conversions in the variant. Now, this should be very easy to spot. If you ever get this in real life, the dimension we're hiring, um, why don't you come work for me? Second round, 50%. It's still pretty easy to detect a 50% uplift, because you're getting, a, a, I think, 1,500 or 2,000 visitors a second in this simulation. So it's still pretty easy to spot, but it's starting to get a little more, more difficult. Third round, 12 and a half, or 25. Fourth round, 12 and a half. Fifth round, seven and a quarter. Can you see where this is going? As we go into the next round, the effect size gets smaller and smaller and smaller, so it becomes more difficult to detect, which means you actually have to run the test longer to even see it. Now, are you ready for this? I'm, I'll be behind the buttons, and all I need you guys to do is shout to me the number of the test that you think is not. Simulation. Sorry? Are you doing arcade mode or simulation? Arcade mode. So simulation mode is a, sort of a campaign mode. It's not done, where you get to wait. And so you get to decide, or do you want to call the test now, or do you want to wait another day? Uh, arcade mode will just advance, keep running, and you have to decide quickly because you will lose points if you wait longer. This is the regret we were talking about. 
Um, simulation mode is more realistic. Arcade mode is just more fun. So that's what we're doing. You guys ready? Just shout the number to test, OK? Ready, set, go. Oh, come on, you can do this. Seven, very good. Eight. Eight. Three. There we go. You got two points. Oh, you get negative one point if you get it wrong, by the way. Four. There we go. We're at 3% conversion uplift now. Nine. Two. Ah. Oh. So we got five points. No, we got three points all together. Do you see how much movement is going on? The, all this fluctuation? So these are nine AA tests, right? And they're still going like Bleh, all over the place. Should we try again? See if we can get better? So theoretically, um, I tried to do the math on how many points you can get. I think if you get seven, um, again, did I mention we're hiring? Uh, seven is pretty, pretty awesome. If you get eight, you're cheating. No, seriously, you're cheating. Um, let's try again. Four. Eight. eight. Ah, oh, there go the points. Look at those visitors go. Bam. Not quite worse than random. Very good. That's all I had. Um, feel free to load this up on your own laptop and then uh, start playing. If you get eight points, let me know. Uh, instant hire. Uh, time for questions. <laughs>